Hello everybody, this is David. In this video, I'm going to explain the VGA controller, also show you the Verilog code for one, and then we'll test it on the Basis 3 FPGA. Alright, so to understand the VGA, you need to understand how the, the pixels are set up for the screen. Um, this example will be for the 640 by 480 um, display area and these standards are set you can find them at vesta.org but it's at a 60 hertz refresh rate you can see down here the formula um, so if we have 800 pixels per line that's what we have times 525 lines per screen going down this way times 60 screens per second we end up with approximately 25 um, million pixels per second, which is our pixel rate. So we need a 25 megahertz clock for that pixel rate. Now, breaking down this area over here, um, for the horizontal, it goes from zero and we'll count to 799 in our counters, but it's a total of 800 pixels. And you have these sections here that are for synchronization. These are the VGAs based on the old CRT scan technology in televisions. Um, so there's certain areas in here they call back porch and front porch, the horizontal and the vertical has it. And then these retrace areas. And that's where <clears throat> we're most concerned with the display area, of course, and then these two retrace areas for signal. And that's what these three signals are here. Uh, the VGA controller will have a signal um, when our pixel count is within the display area. We'll also have a horizontal sync signal when we're in the retrace, the horizontal retrace, and then a V-sync when we're in the vertical retrace. So let me show you. This is my block diagram of the VGA controller. So the VGA controller is this big box right here. <clears throat> now we have the I have the basis three. I'm gonna have a reset button, but it has a 100 megahertz clock. So I need to use a clock divider and create a 25 megahertz to drive the VGA controller. Because <clears throat> as you saw in the with the formula in the last slide, we need 25 megahertz. So it's gonna drive a counter, a horizontal 10-bit counter and a vertical 10-bit counter, two counters, one for what we call X coming out and Y. This signifies that there that this line is 10 bits. But this one will count from 0 to 799, 800 bits, and this one from 0 to 524, um, 525 bits. And I won't talk about this yet. Now, the only other part really in a VGA controller are some comparators for those three other signals I talked about. So when we're in the display area, so the value of X is less than 640, so 0 to 639, Y is 0 to 479. We're in the display area and this video on signal will come out of our controller. And then the H-Sync and V-Sync areas. Trust me, these are the values that are within that are within the retrace area. And look down here for lower right, we have the basis three. This is the actual connector for the VGA. And, and the only pins that we're concerned with are, there's five pins. We don't even need to, we just hook up the wire connected to our monitor. But this is what we're driving with our VGA circuit. We are driving the H-Sync and V-Sync that is part of the VGA connector. But the, the other thing, the red, green, and blue for the RGB values, that has to come from a pixel generation circuit. And so it'll take in a value of X and Y. And when it's in a display area, you can, you know, tell this circuit to send different RGB colors to color different parts of the screen. But what we're gonna do for our purposes is right here, we're going to take an output on the basis three right here. So the Arctic 7 chip actually has four values for each color, four for red, four for green, four for blue, 12 a total, total of 4,096 different colors. But each of these four sets goes through, this is a digital to analog converter. And you have, because we only have one red, one green, and one blue pin on the VGA connector. So this is 
basically a digital analog converter. It takes the four values and converts it into one analog value. And then here's the H sync and the V sync. Now let me take you over to the code. Okay, here we are in Vivado. Um, so this is just the note up here. This is for use whoops, with an FPGA that has a 100 megahertz clock because we're going to generate the 25 megahertz pixel rate tick in this based off a 100 megahertz clock. So if you have a different clock rate in your FPGA, you're going to have to create a different tick circuitry to match the 25 megahertz. But here's our interface for the module, the VGA controller. Got the 100 megahertz clock coming in, the reset button, the video on signal out, H sync, V sync, the pixel tick, and then our values of X and Y pixels. So set up some parameters here based on that diagram. These are the width and pixels of all these areas. And then the max is all of these areas minus one, so 799. Same thing down here for the vertical. We have the vertical display width and pixels, all these areas, and then it's max. Right here, this part is where I generate the 25 megahertz to so just create a register that can count from zero to three, four different values, and then a wire. Um, so always at the plot positive edge clock 100 megahertz. If reset, we'll set the register to zero. Otherwise, it'll just keep counting and wrapping around. And down here in the assign for the wire, every time it does wrap around to zero, we'll set this wire high. So we're asserting it a quarter of the time. So we just created our 25 megahertz pixel tick from the 100 megahertz. So coming down here, created some, uh, these are counter registers. This is the register for X. This is the register for Y, just horizontal and vertical counters. And we're going to buffer them to avoid glitches. So we have another register set here <clears throat> that are going to feed into it. And this is the logic for that down here. I'll show you that in a second. And then we also have some, some registers for the vertical sync, the horizontal sync, and then also some wires for buffering as well. And then here's the logic for all that. You can see if, if we reset, all those registers will go to zero. Um, else at the 100 megahertz clock, we're going to buffer by, um, so down here we're going to set the value of next and some more logic, but then that register gets set. So we're using two registers, double registers. Um, here's the logic for the horizontal counter, always at the pause edge pixel tick. Uh, if reset, it'll go to zero. Otherwise, we'll check if it's at its max. If it is, we'll set it back to zero, uh, else it'll just increment every pixel tick same thing with the vertical counter down here every pause edge of the pixel tick if we're reset we'll go to zero else if we get to the far right which is the horizontal max then we'll check if the if we're at v max which is all the way at the bottom we'll reset vertical to zero otherwise we'll just increment it and go down to the next line every time the the horizontal counter gets to max then we're going to take the vertical counter and go down the next line. And then here are the values for the sync next for the, that'll go into the registers. So it's these are the values within the horizontal retrace area. So from the display to the including the back porch and then including the retrace minus one. Same thing here for the vertical. The video on signal is only while the registers, the pixel positions for X and Y are within the horizontal display area. So this is less than four or 640, this is less than 40. And then all the registers are just assigned into for all of our outputs. Now, now we have a, a VGA controller, we need a way to test it. So I created a test for it right here. And this is for use with an FPGA that has 12 pins for RGB values. If you have <clears throat> another um, values for RGB, like I've seen another one where it was three for one, three for another, and two for one. So that'd be like eight, whatever you got. You just have to change it right here. We're gonna use the 12 switches on the basis three to set the RGB value. And, okay. 
Yep. We're going to set the RGB value and then it'll be in this output right here. We're going to use this register right here to store the value of the switches. We'll have the logic for it down here. And then here's the video on because you don't want to have any pixels coming through in some of the border areas like the back porch and front porch. That's why you have this video on so prevent that from happening. So the logic for that is I'll just um, skip down here to the bottom for the RGB only if the video on signal only if we're, we're within the display area will we set the value of the output RGB to the RGB reg which in this logic right here if it's reset it gets set to zero otherwise at every positive clock it equals the value of the switches the input switches and then down here if video on is not on then we'll just send it all zeros which will be a black screen and then right here is where I instantiate the VGA controller, give it a name. We don't need any signals for P tick X and Y because we don't really have a pixel generation circuit. We don't need the location of X and Y. We're just going to color the entire screen with one color based on the value of the switches. Here's the constraints file. Uh, we need the clock. We need 12 of the switches. I just got switch 0 to 11. And then the VGA connector from the master XTC. And then just make sure you have all your names changed. This will be like red, green, blue. Um, so you need, just need to change it to your RGB. Here's our H sync and V sync. And then button C for the reset. <clears throat> Looks like my synthesis is out of date. I was messing around with the notes and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and run all that, generate the bitstream, and then I'll show you it working on the screen. All right, so here I have it programmed the board and you'll see as I operate the switches we get different colors there's all red force red switches there's some green some blue we can have 4096 different color combinations but what I think is amazing is that every pixel from zero to 639 and each line from 0 to 524 is being colored one at a time 60 times a second so that's just amazing but we're not using the values of x and y but now that we have those values we can send those and color and create graphics on our screen you know different shapes and stuff and then so I'm planning on doing that in the future, so stay tuned for another uh, VGA video. Thanks for watching this one.